Hello, we're here with Leah Griffin, who is a volunteer with the Approve R90 campaign. Leah, would you like to go ahead with your uh, five minute introduction? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me here today. I'm really excited to talk to you about the Approve Referendum 90 campaign. I wanna give you a little bit of background about the, the referendum, what happens, what the law stipulates, and tell you guys how you can help us and make sure that every student in Washington has access to age-appropriate, comprehensive, inclusive sex education. This last legislative session, a lot of people in the 36th and all over the state did a lot of work in order to pass Senate Bill 5395, which was the first sex ed bill in Washington state since 1997. 1997 was before marriage equality, it was before the Me Too movement, and what this law does is make sure that LGBTQ individuals are represented in the curriculum. It provides emotional social learning for K-4 and make sure that students know how to regulate emotions, have healthy relationships, and what good and bad touch is to keep kids safe. It also mandates affirmative consent education in high school, which is really important in preventing sexual violence. Unfortunately, after the bill was, was signed into law by Governor Inslee, a group of radical right-wing people spread a misinformation campaign in order to gather signatures to put it on the ballot this November as a referendum. They were successful in gathering these signatures, and as a result, those of us who support comprehensive sex ed in Washington state need to vote approve to approve the law that was signed by Governor Inslee. Uh, I do a lot of work in sexual violence prevention and sexual assault systems reform. And I've worked on uh, really putting band-aids on problems that exist within our systems, uh, passing trauma-informed police training and testing rape kits and building hospital protocols. And I know that the single most important thing that we can do to prevent sexual violence is make sure that access to consent education and sex ed is not contingent on the zip code in which our students live. Uh, we also know that in the other 25 states that have passed comprehensive sex ed, that students wait longer before having sex, that STI rates are lower, and that teen pregnancy rates are lower. So we know that this law is going to be effective in keeping our children and our students safe and healthy. And I really hope that we have the support of the 36th in getting out a strong vote in support of sex ed for Washington. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and now we're gonna move into the question and answer portion and uh, we will, uh, It'll take two minutes for your responses on these. Um, does anybody have a question they'd like to ask Leah? If so, raise your hand. Summer, go ahead. Summer, you're muted. Yes, uh, Leah, I just wanted you to, to address for a minute how important it is for kids to have this experience and this teaching in a classroom setting with other kids in a, um, open environment. I know for me that I've, uh, my uh, co-parent and I have talked a lot with uh, our teenage son over many, many years about sex ed, but still nothing for him drove it home as much as being in that classroom environment with his peers and hearing about it in that environment. It was just so different for him than learning about it in, um, in the home. So can you talk a little bit about how important that is and why that's crucial and um, that the home learning does not supplant uh, classroom learning. I appreciate that. I think you did a good, pretty good job of explaining the importance yourself. Uh, but I think that, especially when we're talking about consent education at the high school level, building a culture of consent where there's shared understanding among students is really important. So at home, we can reinforce this idea of affirmative consent but when it's taught in the classroom and there's a shared understanding of its importance, that's when it's gonna be really effective. Uh, so we will also know that not every student has a, a parent or a trusted adult that is teaching this information at the, in the home. 
uh, which makes it critical that this information is available to all students, uh, especially disenfranchised students, students who maybe don't have a parent or in, are in the foster system. Uh, those students need this information too. Great. Um, are there any other questions? I'll uh, ask one. Um, if a parent doesn't feel like they want their kid to receive this education at all, or they want to do it in their home, um, what is that? What are the options available to a, that a parent who doesn't want this kind of their kid to get this in school? Well, there are so many options for parents in this law. First, parents have the option to consult with their school districts, with their PTAs, in order to make sure that the curriculum that the district chooses is the best curriculum for that particular district, as long as it meets the inclusivity and consent standards. Uh, so parents have a great opportunity to be involved there. Uh, but parents do retain the option to opt their individual student out of the sex ed curriculum. So that remains uh, an intact option for parents and they are uh, are contacted by the school before the curriculum is taught with ample time to think it over talk about it with their family and make that decision thank you thank you um any other questions Any other questions about the bill or about um, maybe the opposition? I guess I could ask that. Um, who is the opposition for this bill? Uh, the opposition are, are far right wing uh, individuals spreading a lot of in misinformation. And what's great and what makes me really happy as a school librarian who teaches information evaluation as my job is that Washingtonians aren't buying the lies that are being told by the right wing. Uh, this, this law mandates that the information given to student is age appropriate. And most Washingtonians hear the lies of the, the far right and know that their student's third grade teacher isn't doing anything untoward uh, in the classroom. So uh, it's really important to get a strong democratic and moderate vote out there because this is not a, a wedge issue. This is something that Washingtonians overwhelmingly approve regardless of party. Uh, so it's really important that we make sure that we're getting as, getting the vote out there as much as possible to keep kids healthy and safe. Great, thank you. Uh, Mackenzie, I see your hand. Yes, uh, thanks, Leah. Just a question, just to follow up to your last one. Could you give us a couple of examples, maybe one or two, of some of the disinformation things that are floating out there that you would like to clarify, by your opinion? Um, I would rather not. Uh, the misinformation campaign doesn't need any more uh, fuel to the fire. But I'll just say, if you hear something out there that sounds like it's ridiculous, it is ridiculous. Uh, the, the curriculum is age appropriate, it is inclusive of all abilities, and it is not anything that I as a teacher or you as a parent would ever teach your student. Great, thank you. Uh, Nicole, did you have a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, so you mentioned it's gonna be age appropriate sex ed for kids at all levels. Um, what is, if anything, is there in there for ability appropriate uh, teaching for kids? Would there be um, any kind of like special appropriations, especially for sex ed for like special education students or people who uh, may or may not have a learning disability in any sense? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I, that question hasn't come up before. Uh, so I might have to touch base back with you on the campaign. But I know that this is part of the, the standard curriculum and that accommodations that are being met for students in other capacities would also be made for students in this particular curriculum. Great, thank you. Any other questions? 
is, is there, um, what, what sex ed education is currently required in Washington State? Uh, per the Healthy Youth Act of 1997, uh, entire districts are able to opt out of teaching any sex ed whatsoever. Uh, so there are some districts that are already meeting this, this standard uh, and doing curriculums like the FLASH curriculum, uh, but there are still many districts in the state that have opted out entirely from providing any sort of sex ed to any of their students. And that's what we're trying to make sure uh, we correct with this law is to make sure that no matter where you live, you have the ability to learn about what is safe and what is healthy for young people. Thank you. Uh, Sherry. Hi, um, my question is, can you, if you're able, give us a brief example of what a curriculum for, say, uh, K through three would be, and then I know there's flash, I'm familiar with that, but just at the various sort of age levels, what kinds of things would be included? Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so in early elementary education, what we're really talking about is social and emotional learning. So we, there would be a lesson on how to regulate your emotions, like how to calm yourself, uh, how to have healthy relationship, what makes a good friend. And then what's really important is teaching students and giving them the, the vocabulary to be able to reach out to a trusted adult if somebody is abusing them. Uh, so a lot of times students don't, don't have the language and don't know that what is happening to them is bad touch or is wrong. And providing them with that really age appropriate language uh, allows educators to intervene and make sure that we can make, and make sure that that student is taken care of. Great, thank you. Uh, Summer. Uh, Flash has been mentioned a few times, and so I wondered if you could discuss it. My understanding is that it was developed here in King County and is one of the um, the standards across the country now. And I've always felt so um, grateful that my son, who is now going into the eighth grade, has been able to take Flash for the last three or four years, I think it is. I think it started in third or fourth grade. And I think that that's a real equity issue um, that we don't have anything consistent across uh, Washington state. And like you said, that um, it's not something that everybody in every district is able to tap into right now. Maybe it, not, it wouldn't all be flash, um, but still I'm so grateful that my son's been able to participate in the flash program. Can you talk a little bit about flash and the equity issues here? Um, so I don't teach flash. Uh, I'm, I'm a librarian at my, at my school. Uh, but what you said is absolutely true. This is a, a high standard quality curriculum that is, is used here in, in King County. Uh, but students not having access to a curriculum like that is incredibly problematic when it comes to equity. Uh, we know that, that BIPOC students are more likely in Washington State to receive a higher percentage of abstinence-only education. We know that without inclusive curriculum, we have LGBT students who do not see their identity recognized in sex ed curriculum at all. Uh, so it's an issue of heteronormativity that we need to make sure we're combating as well. And then also when it comes to sexual violence, we also have a disproportionate impact on uh, girls, specifically girls of color. And it's important that in every zip code in Washington, students get these lessons that are going to keep them safe. Can I add something? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there is no requirement to use a specific curriculum under the law because we're a local control state. So local districts can adopt curriculum that they feel suits their community's needs, but um, they, they have to adhere to certain standards. And OSPI is actually uh, required under this law to um, compile uh, a uh, summary of different available curricula and whether or not they meet standards um, on various metrics, um, including inclusivity and um, age appropriateness, that kind of stuff. Thank you. Any other questions? 
about this particular referendum. Give folks a second. Do you happen to know by any chance, um, I guess, what OSPI's uh, curriculum would look like? There is actually a very wonderful uh, website on OSPI uh, that I can email you, Nicole, that has a lot of the curriculum uh, options available with a frequently asked questions page. Uh, so that is, is available for anyone to peruse at their leisure. Great, thank you. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions. So um, if you would like to go ahead and give a, a brief one minute wrap up and, and talk to the folks at home as to uh, why they should you know, consider your position, um, that would be great. Great. Uh, like I said, working in sexual assault reform, this is the single most important thing that we can do to prevent sexual violence in this state. Uh, it's also something that we can do to prevent unwanted pregnancy and STIs and keep our kids safe, healthy, and affirmed. Uh, we would love to have the powerhouse of the 36 signed on to the campaign because it is so important that we get out a, a strong vote uh, in November, both for our country and for our kids. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, we've got a website, uh, approve90wa.org where you can sign up to pledge your vote to the campaign, you can donate funds to the, to the campaign, uh, but we've got some, some challengers who are, are fighting dirty and we're not gonna fight dirty, we're gonna fight back with facts and with honest care for, for our students. Uh, so I really hope that you vote to endorse and approve vote on referendum 90 and tell your network and your family and your friends that this is the responsible thing to do for our students of Washington State. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Leah. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.